everyone welcome once again to my youtube channel diy repairs today we will talk about whether we should install ro water purifier in our homes or not it is true that a lot of water is wasted in ro water purifier it rejects more water than it filters according to world health organization if the tds of water is up to 500 then we can drink it so it is clear that people uh, whose tds of water is more than 500 in their homes should get ro water purifier installed but the question arises that if TDS is less than 500, then RO water purifier should be installed or not. According to me, by measuring the TDS of water, we can't say whether RO water purifier should be installed or not. Because TDS only tells how much minerals are present in the water. It does not tell which type of minerals are there. By measuring TDS, we can't find out whether the minerals in the water are good for our health or not. Suppose the TDS of water is 200, but it contains heavy metals such as lead, cadmium or nickel, then this water is harmful to health. So first of all, we should get the water tested. From this, it will be known that how many minerals are there in the water, whether they are heavy metals or not. Many water testing kits are available in the market, but they are very expensive. So today, by using a very easy technique, we will find out that how much heavy metals are there in the water. This technique is electrocoagulation. Actually, this technique is used for the treatment of wastewater containing heavy metal ions such as nickel, lead, cadmium by using aluminium or iron anodes to release active coagulant flux. The flux of aluminium or iron hydroxide mainly acts as an absorbent for the metal ions. Therefore, it can eliminate them from the solution. For electrocoagulation, we need two iron and two aluminium plates of the same size. We can also take aluminium and iron rods instead of plates. We also need a piece of MDF or medium density fiber board to fit these plates. We can also use a piece of ply board or plastic board. Since we have to keep aluminium and iron plates parallel at equal distance, so let's mark on the MDF board with a scale. We have to keep such a distance between these two plates that they do not touch each other. Let's make a cut with the blade on the mark so that the plate fits into it. In these plates, holes are made with a nail to tie the wire. Now fit these plates along with the wire on the MDF board. The plates have to be fitted alternately. That is, if aluminium plate is fitted first, then fit iron plate next and then aluminium plate and then iron plate. Now connect both the outer plates which are aluminium and iron together with the wires.
Similarly, connect the inner iron and aluminium plates with wire. We will connect it to 12 volt DC or 24 volt DC. The more voltage we apply, the faster the chemical reaction will occur in the water. We can also give it to 20 volt DC, but there will be danger of electrocution. So we will check it with 24 volt DC only. First of all, take normal water. You can see that its TDS is 233. Let's see this water with electrocoagulation technique that how much heavy metals are there in it. Connect the positive and negative leads of the 24 volt adapter to any wire. You can see that the reaction has started as soon as we power up the adapter. Let's electrocoagulate this water for 10 minutes. Since we have connected both the outer aluminium and iron plate to positive, the outer plates become the anode where aluminium hydroxide and iron hydroxide flocks will form, which will adsorb the heavy metal ions. After 10 minutes, we can see how much heavy metal ions were there in this water. Leave it for an hour so that all the flock settles at the bottom of the glass. Let us now take RO water. You can see that its TDS is 120. Now also electrocoagulate this water for 10 minutes. We can see that the flux is slowly settling in the bottom of the glass in normal water. After 10 minutes, we can see that RO water had also some heavy metal ions, but very less as compared to normal water. After half an hour, you can see that the flux has almost settled down. Let us now check whether there is any difference in TDS or not. You can see that the TDS of normal water is 204, which was earlier 233. Similarly, TDS of RO water is 115, which was earlier 120. If we had done electrocoagulation for a longer time instead of 10 minutes, TDS would have been even less. So by this simple technique, we can know whether the water coming in our houses is drinkable or not.